Well, I was asked to speak this year not simply because it was the 350th anniversary of the uh, execution of uh, Ilium Doan, but also because, of course, it's the 50th anniversary of the uh, founding of um, McVannan. McVannan actually met in 1962, but the formative meeting, uh, which I was at, so it shows my age, was in. Uh, 1963. Um, I always shoot from the hip at these uh, sort of events. I don't prepare a speech and I was trying to think on the way down how I would uh, get an intro and I was also thinking about the McVannan commemoration and I thought although it's been held over the last couple of years and it's been very well attended it's been fairly low-key in that media interest which I'm pleased to say has uh, changed this year, uh, appeared to be um, very patchy in relation to it. And I thought, well, nothing changes, you know, because if people are prepared to go out and daub roads or burn a few houses down, suddenly everybody's interested in nationalism. If people want to talk about progress through constitutional means, nationalism, all becomes slightly more mundane and boring. Now that's exactly the problem that faced the people who set up McVannan 50 years ago. They had to decide whether they followed the path being taken in other uh, colonial uh, dominions at that time and effectively went for direct action or whether they followed a constitutional path and McVannan at the time and there were some fine people in it um, and certainly I was probably at the lower end of the scale in that regard I think um, I can recall making tea on a number of occasions and being sent to make tea um, they were very mixed in their attitudes to how the movement should go forward and there were some who felt that militant action such as that at that time was being mooted in Scotland and Wales should be uh, followed in the Isle of Man. I mean evidence of that surfaced um, a couple of years ago actually when um, uh, Tom Hanley, a good Irish friend of the Manx National Movement, managed to locate a archive footage in uh, RTE in Dublin which showed uh, a Manx colour party walking with uh, Irish nationalists at the uh, 1966 commemoration over there. So there was, it was very much the mood of the time because remember the island was uh, very much a colony in those days, powers which we take for granted today the fact that there's a president of Tinwald, there's a chief minister, there's ministerial government, often much maligned. I wish people who malign it, those people on uh, internet forums or through the paper who always snipe at the government, would look back to what we had in the early 60s when nationalism came to the fore. It was a very different picture then, I can assure you. There were great tensions within McVannan at that time over how the movement should progress. The militants um, maybe rightly or wrongly lost out and constitutional uh, development was seen as the way forward. McVannan sought and Jack Irvin as a leading figure in McVannan at that time obtained a meeting with the governor of the day and the governor in the early 60s had tremendous power in the Isle of Man and it was very much touch or go whether they'd be prepared to meet with the nationalist movement which was um, as regarded the establishment here viewed with a degree of suspicion but eventually that meeting took place and I think from then on McFarren became uh, wedded or bedded to the constitutional road 
Now, the fact that that isn't enough has been evidenced over the years in the 70s, the 80s, and indeed in the 90s by the fact that periodically there are outbursts of direct action. People's tension and frustration with the lack of progress being made uh, on the island tends to boil over and that eventually will out. And I think the message from that is that the, there needs to be an understanding that this is a separate and independent country, that it's got its own ideals and objectives. And the sooner the politicians catch up on that idea, the better. There was a little bit of leeway in the 60s. The governor, the crown held all the power. So to, uh, if you like, accommodate nationalist pressures, all the changes that we now take for granted, the greater fiscal powers that came first in the 60s, the greater political powers that came particularly in the 80s when Miles Walker took the government down the ministerial road path, which I think was the correct move at the time. That leeway has gone now. There's one thing though that is very similar today to the point in time at which McFanon was formed. One of the major tensions which led to the formation of McVannan was the frustration about the dire economic circumstances that the island found itself in. People came back from working overseas in colonies, they, which were seeking their own independence. They came back from doing national service, which was only just ending at that time. They'd been out and seen the world and seen what others were doing and they'd seen that others were tackling their own problems head on. And here on the island, we still had people in the winter time who had no work and had to go to the east of England to work picking sugar beet and, and other jobs uh, uh, which were available in the UK. Now, in the last 12 to 18 months, we've had a a learning curve on the island. The good times, if you like, have come to an end and uh, fiscal reality is starting to catch up on us. So the island needs to find a way forward and it needs to have people, young people in particular, with the same vision as the people who established McBannon years ago and said, this uh, crown link, this quasi-colony situation cannot go on any longer. We have got to take control of our own destiny. Now, don't listen to or read all the garbage in the history books about the fact that a number of well-meaning businessmen on the island got together and suddenly realised it would be good for the island if we took control of our own fiscal identity. When the history books are properly written, it will show that the tensions at that time were such that there was no other way for the island to go but to take control of its own destiny. Now, there's only one real way for it to go from here, and that's to take greater control. If it looks towards the UK, we'll find ourselves in an increasingly deepening fiscal depression because the UK has its own problems. You resolve problems by taking a hold of them yourself and carrying them forward. I could have run off a, a list of names here um, of people who were there when McVannon were founded. They were some of the finest people I have known and I've worked in a number of organisations. I've known and know good and committed people in the trade union movement and I've known people over the years in the political movement but the people who made the greatest impression on me were those who set up McVannon in those early days. Invariably of course and I'll finish on this note you'll be pleased to hear um, invariably as with all Celtic nationalist movements everybody said when will the split come and of course the split eventually did come. But 
Actually, it was a blessing in disguise. One of the people who departed from McVannan following that split was the late Dougie Farragher. And of course, Dougie Farragher went on to devote his time and the rest of his life to the Manx language. So uh, we got a double bonus there. Political nationalism continued and the linguistic side of cultural nationalism got a shot in the arm, which wasn't equaled until uh, uh, Brian was appointed as uh, language officer. Brian stole much later on. Thank you very much for enduring my reminiscences about McFadden.